Hello everyone, it's Exu here. With the media tour embargo being lifted a few days ago, I'm sure you're all curious about the Black Mage changes for Endwalker. In this video, I'm going to go over the changes to Black Mage from Shadowbringers to Endwalker and discuss possible openers, single target, and AoE rotations. We'll also discuss the non-standard or AI rotation and how it will survive in Endwalker. But first, a disclaimer. All the tooltips that you're going to see in this video are from the media tour and are all subject to change be it their potencies, effect durations, or actual effects. This video is based solely on the current information we have at this time, so please keep that in mind while you're watching. So, what changed for Black Mage and Endwalker? First, let's cover some changes to existing abilities. Blizzard 2 is no longer an AoE centered around the caster. Now, it's a targeted spell and grants Umbral Ice 3, starting at level 35, instead of granting one Umbral Ice or removing Astral Fire. Its casting time has been increased, but its potency has also been increased to compensate. Besides a small potency upgrade, Fire 2 now grants Astral Fire 3 starting at level 35 instead of granting one Astral Fire or removing Umbral Ice. At level 82, Blizzard 2 and Fire 2 become High Blizzard 2 and High Fire 2 respectively. While High Blizzard 2 is a simple potency upgrade, High Fire 2 adds an added bonus of granting stacks of Enhanced Flare when used in Astral Fire, which increase the potency of your next two Flare casts. Fire 3 and Blizzard 3 are now obtained at the same level, uh, which is level 35. These abilities were given at level 34 and level 40 in Shadowbreakers, respectively. Freeze is now obtained at level 40 rather than level 35. It also changes functions in Endwalker, having an increased cast time going from 2.5 to 2.8 seconds, and it can no longer be cast in Astral Fire. Freeze is now essentially an AoE version of Blizzard 4 and is used primarily to get Umbral Hearts. Flare has been reduced by 40 potency to 220, but now has a secondary potency when used under the Enhanced Flare status effect granted by High Fire 2. Flare also cannot be used in Umbral Ice anymore, so the Cold Flare AoE rotation that was popular in Shadowbringers is no longer possible. We'll go over this more when we cover AoE. Val and Xenoglossy have both been reduced by 50 potency to 600 and 700 respectively. The damage falloff for Val has also increased from 25% falloff to other targets to 50% falloff. In Shadowbringers, a Foul on two targets was a 387.5 potency gain over Xeno. And in Endwalker, with current media tour values, a foul on two targets is now only a 200 potency gain. These potencies are of course not final, but it seems clear that they intend to make padding less of a gain than before, with the 50% falloff on foul. Now let's do a deeper dive on some of the other changes. Firstly, Enochian is now a trait, and is no longer a button that you have to press to activate. From level 56, when you get the Enochian trait in Endwalker, Enochian is now always passively on as long as you are in Astral Fire or Umbral Ice. While not a major change for most players, it is a little quality of life change for players who are still learning or just picking up the class, as they will still be able to use the majority of their toolkit even if dropping Enochian repeatedly in an encounter. You'll still lose progress towards Polyglot if you drop Astral Fire or Umbral Ice, so it's still bad to drop. Enochian's Magic Damage Multiplier is also increased to 20% with the level 86 trait Enhanced Enochian 3. Next, Sharpcast now has two charges, and Prox now lasts longer. From the level 88 trait Enhanced Sharpcast 2, Sharpcast gains an additional charge. This will enable a lot more Thundercloud proc uptime in a fight as one of the limiting factors for this in Shadowbringers was that Sharpcast was on a 30 second cooldown and Thunderprox lasted only 18 seconds. In Endwalker, Thundercloud Prox now lasts 21 seconds, and Firestarter Prox lasts a whopping 30 seconds. The Firestarter Prox change can allow for some interesting re-entry into Astral Fire via transpose lines, which we'll cover when we go over the single target rotation. The increased Thundercloud duration is very neat, especially for lower spell speed builds. 
depending on the viability of non-standard lines, it may be possible to hold thundercloud procs for umbral ice phases which previously would have to have been used during astral fire phases due to the 18 second limit of the proc in Shadowbringers. The increased thundercloud proc also has implications for the openers, which we'll go over later on in this video. In general, the increased duration of procs and the increased procs due to multiple sharp cast charges will add even more potential movement and weaving tools to Black Mage's kit. Next, the addition of Amplifier, a 120 second cooldown that grants a polyglot stack, and Mana Font being reduced to a 120 second cooldown. With the recast time of Mana Font being reduced to 120 seconds from 180 seconds from the level 84 trait Enhanced Mana Font, and Amplifier providing a free polyglot every 2 minutes, Black Mage can provide burstier damage output into 2 minute buff windows such as Technical Finish, Battle Litany, and Brotherhood. Mana Font previously being a 3 minute cooldown ability meant that it was typically not used strictly on cooldown and you could typically hold it for a while and not lose usage. With the recast time being reduced to 2 minutes, it is more important now that Mana Font is used closer to on cooldown to prevent usages being lost in an encounter. Fourth, Foul is now an instant cast GCD. Starting at level 80, Foul gets a traded upgrade to become an instant cast. This is a neat quality of life change for dungeons and AoE situations and puts it in line with Xenoglossy in terms of being a polyglot spender that is an instant cast. In fights like the Epic of Alexander Ultimate, which are synced to level 80, this is a great change as you typically had to decide between using Xenoglossy to move or Foul to do maximum damage on the two target phases of Living Liquid and Brute Justice Cruise Chaser. Now you can exclusively use Foul if the bosses are stacked and you would incur no movement or weaving penalties. Lastly, the addition of Paradox and Aspect Mastery 5. Paradox is a strong, unaspected spell of 510 potency that can both be used in Astral Fire and Umbral Ice. It cannot be placed on your hotbar, and it will replace your Fire 1 and Blizzard 1 buttons on your bar. You can press either one to use Paradox regardless of what element you are in. It is important to note that Paradox is an unaspected spell like Foul or Xenoglossy. This means that it is not buffed by the damage boost of Astral Fire. Paradox is simply 510 potency regardless of your current elemental stance. Paradox can only be used when under the effect of Paradox. The conditions for getting the Paradox effect are located in the Aspect Mastery 5 level 90 trait. You will obtain a Paradox Marker which enables you to use Paradox under the following conditions. Number 1, be in Astral Fire 3 and swap to the opposite element. This enables you to use Paradox in Umbral Ice. Number 2, be in Umbral Ice 3 and have 3 Umbral Hearts and then swap to the opposite element. This enables you to use Paradox in Astral Fire. What is currently unknown and needs further testing is if you can bank a Paradox Marker. For example, if you are finishing your Astral Fire phase and swap to Umbral Ice and get a Paradox Marker, and then swap back to Fire if you still keep that Paradox Marker if you hadn't used it. Paradox will replace Fire 1 in the standard Astral Fire rotation and become a strong filler spell to use in Umbral Ice. It refreshes both Astral Fire and your Umbral Ice timer, and it can also grant Fire Starter when used in Astral Fire. You can also use Sharp Cast on Paradox to guarantee the Fire Starter proc. Paradox is also gained when using Transpose, as that qualifies as swapping to the opposite element, so it can lead to several interesting non-standard or AI lines that can be used in Endwalker. Next, the Aspect Mastery trait has been moved to level 1. A great quality of life trait in Shadowbringers was Aspect Mastery, which made the Black Mage single target and AoE rotation more fluid and enabled you to cast spells of the opposite element at no MP cost at max stacks of Astral Fire or Umbral Ice. In Endwalker, this is now a trait given at level 1, 
which will provide some much needed relief to the clunky black mage AoE rotations in early levels which had to use transpose to get mana ticks. This is a great change for players who are just starting the game or just picking up black mage so that they'll have a much more enjoyable experience leveling up the job. So keeping all of the previously mentioned things in mind, what can we begin to determine about Black Mage for a raid setting? Let's start with the openers. The openers in general will be relatively unchanged for Endwalker. The biggest addition to the opener is Amplifier, which needs to be slotted in as an OGCD weave during our triple cast and swift cast windows in the opener. Of interest to note is that the JP opener previously only being able to be used at spell speeds exceeding 3600, can now be used at near base spell speed due to the increased 3 seconds on the Thundercloud proc. The 18 second duration of Thundercloud in Shadowbringers was the main failure point for the JP opener not working at lower spell speeds. Similarly, the mod JP opener with pre-pull ley lines can now be used at pretty much all spell speeds and should be the go-to opener when you have to pre-pull ley lines in an encounter. The no before opener can still be used, but it offers less damage output than the JP opener without offering any real benefits anymore. You won't run into the problem of outspeeding your Xenoglossy with this opener anymore, since the weaved amplifier can now grant you a Xenoglossy to use before 30 seconds. However, I would suggest to use the JP opener as it provides better buff alignment, and it is higher potency per second than the no before opener. Now let's talk about how the single target rotation will be impacted based on the new skills. The general standard single target rotation for Black Mage has not changed very much between Shadowbringers and Endwalker, the biggest addition being Paradox replacing Fire 1 and an additional cast of Paradox in your Umbral Ice phase. This does make the standard rotation slightly longer in Endwalker compared to Shadowbringers. With the addition of Paradox, the standard rotation has gone up in value, and that current Media Tour potencies is about 5% better than it used to be in Shadowbringers. So we know that the standard rotation in Endwalker will be pretty similar, but how will the AI or non-standard rotations hold up in Endwalker? Unfortunately for transpose lines, Paradox will not be able to be used in Astral Fire unless you have previously casted Blizzard 3 or Blizzard 4, as you need to enter Astral Fire from Umbral Ice 3 with 3 hearts. This is, of course, under the assumption that you cannot bank a Paradox to use later. But fear not, because transposing from Astral Fire 3 to Umbral Ice does in fact grant a Paradox marker based on current Mediator information. What does this mean for us? It means we have a strong, zero mana cost filler to use in our Umbral Ice phase every transpose window. Transpose lines such as a, an Umbral Ice Paradox with a slow fire 3 into 3 fire 4s into despair, or even 4 fire 4s into despair, at current potency values are still slightly higher in value than the standard Endwalker rotation, although not by much. While a slow fire 3 into 3 fire 4s or 4 fire 4s into despair used to be about 3.5 and 5.8% better than the standard Shadowbringers rotation, Paradox has increased the value of the standard Endwalker rotation such that the gain of an Umbralized Paradox into a slow fire 3, 3 f4 despair, or 4 f4 despair is now only around 1 to 3%. However, at current potency values, it still is a gain. With the update to the Aspect Mastery trait, you can now cast a Fire 3 from Umbral Ice 1 at no mana cost, as full stacks of Astral Fire or Umbral Ice are no longer a requirement to get the 0 MP cost benefit. That means for simple transpose lines like a 3 Fire 4 and Despair, Lucid Dreaming is no longer needed. However, for a 4 Fire 4 line, you would still need Lucid Dreaming or a fast mana tick after Transpose. Paradox being a free Umbral Ice filler, and the update to Aspect Mastery almost removes the need for a mana tick tracker, although I still think having one will be useful during an encounter for any lines that would require fast mana ticks. With the 30 second extension on Firestarter, 
a Fire 3 proc from a previously executed standard rotation can be carried over to your next Umbral Ice phase. If using an instant in your Ice phase, such as a Thunder 3 proc or a Xenoglossy, it can be used in conjunction with Transpose so that the Fire 3 proc is used in Astral Fire 1 for a minor potency per second gain over just using that Fire 3 proc in Astral Fire 3 and then having to cast a weak, fast Fire 3 from Umbral Ice 3. Besides Transpose lines, we can also think about regular Blizzard 4 skipping lines. Under Ley Lines, the following line offers a small potency per second gain over the standard rotation. However, this is not a huge gain, and it's only around 1% better. Compared to Shadowbringers, where a similar line without Paradox would be closer to 4% better than the standard Shadowbringers rotation. Now, because a 5 Fire 4 in Despair under Ley Lines is only just slightly better than standard, you should pretty much always cast a Blizzard 4 when you cast Blizzard 3 unless a boss is going to phase change or disappear and you cannot complete a standard rotation, or if you're under Ley Lines and can guarantee a 5 Fire 4 Despair. For example, the following line at current Media Tour potencies is only around 0.5% worse in, pro in terms of potency per second than a standard rotation, but it also takes 35% less time to execute so it could be viable in certain scenarios if you know that you only have a certain amount of time before a boss will disappear. Although the single target rotation for Black Mage and Endwalker is very similar to Shadowbringers, the same cannot be said for the AoE rotation. The trait Aspect Mastery 4 given at level 82 upgrades Fire 2 and Blizzard 2 to High Fire 2 and High Blizzard 2 respectively and they are meant to be a core part of the new standard AoE rotation. While High Blizzard 2 simply looks to be a small potency upgrade over Blizzard 2 currently, High Fire 2, when used in Astral Fire, can also generate stacks of Enhanced Flare. With two stacks as the maximum, these Enhanced Flare stacks increase the potency of your next Flare cast by 40, up to where Flare was in Shadowbringers. As mentioned earlier in the video, Freeze also changed functionally from Shadowbringers to Endwalker. While in Shadowbringers, Freeze was used as a transition spell from Astral Fire to Umbral Ice, which also granted one Umbral Heart, in Endwalker now it's just an AoE version of Blizzard 4. High Blizzard 2 is now the intended spell to use to transition from Astral Fire to Umbral Ice in an AoE scenario, and you'll also have to cast Freeze in order to get Umbral Hearts. Knowing all of this, we can begin to craft the AoE rotations for endgame content. The standard AoE rotation for 3 or more enemies at level 82 and higher is pictured here. Not pictured is Foul and Thunder 4, as these can be placed relatively freely in the rotation. The first High Blizzard 2 is to grant Umbral Ice 3, and the Freeze is to give 3 Umbral Hearts. The first High Fire 2 is to transition from Umbral Ice 3 to Astral Fire 3. The second and third High Fire 2s will give you your two stacks of Enhanced Flare, and finally your two flares at the end will consume those stacks and deal AoE damage. Now, it is obvious to see that this AoE rotation is very long compared to the Shadowbringers rotation, which was simply freeze into two flares, or Freeze, then Fire 3, and then 2 Flares. At current Media Tour potencies, the new standard Endwalker AoE rotation is actually worse in terms of potency per second compared to Shadowbringer's standard AoE rotation for 4 or fewer targets. This really boils down to High Blizzard 2 and High Fire 2 being quite underwhelming GCDs. When used as fast cast abilities, they are only 70 potency, and they do not feel rewarding to cast. Even in Astral Fire 3, a buffed High Fire 2 is only 180 potency. It actually is optimal to skip casting High Blizzard 2 with the current damage values. You can do a rotation such as this, which is actually almost 10% higher in potency per second than the standard Endwalker rotation. All you need is a mana tick after your first transpose, which is quite doable with fillers like Paradox, 
Thunder 4 procs, and Foul. The long cast of Freeze is enough to generate a second mana tick, and using another instant to weave transpose a second time lets you skip a fast high fire 2, and instead use your first high fire 2 in astral fire 1, which will still grant enhanced flare. Honestly, I find it quite disappointing that this is DPS optimal. It doesn't seem intended. It seems like Square just added unnecessary fluff to the AoE rotation in Endwalker and just made it feel worse to use. For example, you can only stack Enhanced Flare twice, so if you're using Triple Cast on Flares in conjunction with Mana Font to use 3 Flares, then one of your Flares is weak since you only have 2 Enhanced Flare stacks, or if you're using Quadruple Flares with an Aether, then 2 of the Flares are weak. Now, I personally hope that they keep Flare as a 260 potency base ability, and instead make Enhanced Flare a 300 potency ability, because that would keep Flare a relevant skill to use in two target boss encounters where you wouldn't want to cast High Fire 2. If its potency stayed at 260 like it is right now in Shadowbringers, then it's a gain over Despair if instant casted on two targets. Right now, if Endwalker potencies stay the same, then you would completely skip using Flare if you were trying to do Epic of Alexander Ultimate, and this was actually one cool optimization that you could do to maximize your damage on Phase 1 and Phase 2, which is now just removed from the game. So I hope Square adjusts Flare's potency correspondingly because any two target encounters in Endwalker, which I'm sure there'll be a few, would have way less depth to them with optimizations like these being removed. Thanks everyone for checking out my video. That just about wraps up the summary of Black Mage at the Media Tour. Single target wise, Black Mage plays just about the same from Shadowbringers to Endwalker, but there are a lot of gameplay adjustments for AoE rotations at all level ranges. The non-standard or AI rotation will live on in Endwalker and is still a small gain over standard gameplay with current Media Tour values. While there are some aspects of the AoE gameplay updates that I do not like, it's not enough to dissuade me from playing Black Mage, and I'm still looking forward to playing it in Endwalker. If you like the content on YouTube, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. I plan on producing even more content when Endwalker releases, such as tips and tricks videos for savage and extreme content. I currently stream 3 days a week at twitch.tv slash although my streaming schedule will definitely ramp up when Endwalker comes out.